How's it going, Rogue Scally, and welcome to another MetaZoo video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today we have the very first MetaZoo Top 10 on Red Zone Rogue, and you know what? I figured what better place to start than just my top 10 favorite cards from the Cryptid Nation set, the first MetaZoo set. So if you're watching this in the future, Cryptid Nation is the very first MetaZoo set. Uh, first edition is just around the corner. This video will probably be coming out either the day before or the day of first edition release, and I cannot be more excited. I think it's a, a ton of fun. MetaZoo is such a fun game, and there's all these really cool cryptids, and some of them, you know, they resonate with me personally because they are, you know, from where I am here in Oregon. We got your Bigfoot, we got your Gumbaroo, we got your, uh, your Bat Squatch, though that's much, uh, up north near Seattle. But in any case, I'm really excited to talk about my top 10 cards from the Cryptid Nation set. Um, since this is coming out before first edition, if there's any like special secret stuff in first edition that we don't know about yet, well, I don't know about it yet, so that's not gonna be on the list. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started with today's top 10, my top 10 favorite cards from MetaZoo, Cryptid Nation. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Before we get started proper, I do want to mention that we're actually going to be talking about 14 cards today because I could not help myself. I couldn't pare it down to 10. There's just so many really cool cards that I want to talk about. Um, so let's get started. We have a little bit more to talk about. Uh, the first card that we're going to talk about today is the Beast of Busco. This is one of the most fun cards in this entire game, in my opinion. And this is going to kind of set the tone for my top 10 list or top 14 list I suppose that I'm picking a lot of cards that I think are just really cool and fun some of them are very flavorful with the beasties and some of them are just like really goofy so Beast of Busco you can have two per spellbook this is a rare card um, it costs five to play and it has 80 life it is a um, like a water beastie it does have a bonus of 50 if you are near an island and it says power Hungry Crypto, and that name is so appropriate. I wish it was called Hungry Hungry Crypto because he's kind of like a hungry, hungry hippo. It says, place the bottom of your palm at the top of Beast of Busco's page. Top. Top. I can say it right. Every non-aura page controlled by an opposing caster your fingers can touch from this position is dealt 50 damage. And then, you know, plus 50 because of the modifier if you are near an island. And I'm going to stop right there and say that... In MetaZoo, you cannot move a card around after you play it. So just keep that in mind. You play the Beast of Busco, and then you can't move it around and try to gobble up all of your opponent's cards. Um, it has to stay there, you know, from that position. And it also says, every non-aura page controlled by you that your fingers can touch is placed in the afterlife, and you may bookmark, which means draw, um, an equal number of pages, pages are cards, from the top of your spellbook. Spellbook is your deck. So you can eat up your cards and then draw them for all the cards that um, you destroy this way. Uh, Beast of Busco cannot declare an attack, and uh, any combat damage that would be dealt to Beast of Busco is reduced to zero. So it's just really hard to kill, and it's weird and really, really fun. So yeah, really like the Beast of Busco. Next up, we have my personal favorite cryptid, one of the most renowned in the entire world. We have Bigfoot. Uh, Bigfoot is a Sasquatch. You can only have one in your deck. Costs four to play, has an 80 life, and it's like a forest-style beastie. I don't have all of the, the types memorized uh, 100%, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, that little swirly bit on the top means uh, that it has the convertibility, which means you can uh, fatigue it to generate one ore of the same type. So you can generate like a, a forest style aura. If you're um, near a forest, it gets a plus 25 bonus. It also says if you're within five miles of a forest, Bigfoot gains, and let me get this right. Um, the eye is invisible, which means no defenders may be declared when a beastie or artifact with this trait attacks, and this beastie or artifact may not be the target of an attack, which is really sweet. And the shield one um, means that uh, it is magic proof or magi proof a beastie or artifact with this trait cannot be targeted by spells. So it's hiding in the woods. It's back out of focus behind the trees. It's just really hard to deal with. It also has a power that says King of Apes. Uh, you can fatigue or awaken one target beastie 
Sasquatch. It also has the Berserk attack, which is awesome because it's called Berserk. Does 50 damage, does bonus damage to water beasties, but an additional 25 if you're near a um, forest as well. So Bigfoot, super sweet. It's actually a really, really powerful card. Um, just really, really hard to deal with. Basically unblockable. Um, and your opponents can't attack it if you're near a forest, and it's also magic proof. So Bigfoot, Bigfoot's a big deal. Next up, we have the Fresno Nightcrawlers. And I'm going to say at this point, this is in no particular order. We're just going to go down the list. So this only costs two to play. It is a um, cosmic cryptid. It's an alien, a beastie alien. And the abilities that it has in the top, and once again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get these right. So the, the one that looks like a ghost means it's a spirit, which means a beastie or artifact with this trait cannot be the target of attacks, so your opponent can't attack it. And then the foot basically means that it can uh, act the turn it comes into play. It says a beastie with this trait does not enter the arena fatigued, which is sweet. If it's nighttime, it does an additional 25 damage, which is really sweet. It only costs two to play, which is awesome. This one is one of the meme cards. It says, this beastie cannot be contracted, so you can't play it. Um, if you are wearing pants, so if you have no pants on, you can play this. Um, you can argue in, with your group what are considered pants. So maybe if you're wearing like capris or something, maybe people will let you get away with it or just shorts. And it also says, when Fresno Nightcrawlers enters the arena, you may reveal any number of non-cosmic pages from your hand, then shuffle them into your deck. You may then draw an equal number of pages, cards, from the top of your spellbook. Pretty good. Let's you kind of cycle some cards out. And also has Cosmic Orb attacks for 50, does bonus damage to dark type beasties. Really good. Just a two cost that does 50 damage is pretty sweet. And it also has that extra effect. I think this is actually one of the best cards in the game. Just like playability wise, super good. Just gotta be, don't just don't wear pants. Just don't wear pants. Uh, next up we have the Ghost Train. One of my favorite cards. I mean, obviously, these are all my favorite cards, but the Ghost Train's super cool. So it costs uh, three spirit and two of any. has has 100 life. Um, you can only have one in your deck. It does have that spirit ability where um, it, it can't be the target of attacks. And this one, it's got like a essay here, a little mini essay here. It says, whenever a beastie or beasties you control would be placed in the afterlife, you may make train sounds. Choo choo. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. To place that beastie or beasties face up under ghost train. So basically, when your beasties die, they get on the ghost train, which is so flavorful. It's so flavorful. They're literally like riding the ghost train. Um, it says, you may fatigue this page at any time to choose one face up beastie under ghost train and place it into the arena awakened and under your control. The chosen beastie is now a you know spirit ghost beastie instead of its original aura. Place the chosen beastie in your cemetery at the end of the turn. So you kind of just get it for one turn, but you can immediately attack with it or use its ability because it comes in like unfatigued. Uh, when ghost train leaves the arena, place all face up pages under it into the afterlife. Any face-up pages underneath Ghost Train are not considered to be in the arena and cannot be selected as a target. This card is so cool. The art is really cool. Shout out to Poncho. The effect is super flavorful. It's just really sweet. Really, really sweet. Ghost Train is awesome. Next up, we have Growth. Very simple card. One of the most powerful cards in the entire game. The reason. This is kind of like the reason that you would want to play like a forest style deck. Cost two to play. One in your spell book, and it says, if there is a plant within arm's reach of the arena, you know, bring along a plant, draw five cards. That is insane. It's a book, bookmark five pages from the top of your spell book. You draw five cards for two. This card is bonkers. Absolutely freaking bonkers. So... I, I don't know what else to say. This is a staple card, one of the most powerful cards in the entire game. Drawing five cards for minimal resources is ab absurdly, absurdly powerful. And it looks really, really cool in foil. So, yeah, growth. This It's crazy. Bring bring a plant. Bring a little tiny plant with you. Next up, we have Gumbaru. This, this guy is... He looks insane. And it's actually really good. This is the only, like, non-rare in the, in the list here. So it's a beastie fearsome critter. Gumbaru. Um, you can have five in your spellbook. Costs only one to play and has 30 life. This is kind of like a staple card, in my opinion, for many, many forest-style decks. It says, reduce all combat damage Gumbaru would take to zero. It already then, it's just kind of like blubbery, chunky. It's really hard to deal damage to. But if it takes fire damage, 
or is inflicted with burn, it immediately explodes and is placed in the afterlife, and then you take 50 damage. So it's basically impervious unless your opponent uh, has fire. And it also has tribal boost. A lot of the beastie fearsome critters have tribal boost, which means this page gains plus 10 life and plus 10 uh, damage for each beastie fearsome critter, each beastie fearsome critter in the arena. So if you want to you want to play a lot of them, basically pump them all up. It also has recoil, which says you may reduce recoil's damage to zero after applying additional effects to bounce send target opposing page in combat to its owner's chapter hand. So you can use them to bounce stuff back to your opponent's hand or do a little bit of damage. Um, it's really, really good to use them early game to bounce stuff to your opponent's hand. And then late game, when you have a bunch of beastly fearsome critters to, to deal that major damage. Gumbaroo is sweet. And every time I'm playing, I'm going to go Gumbaroo. Okay, we're going to go. We're going to keep going. Next up, we have the Jersey Devil, another one of the most popular beasties, cryptids in the world. Uh, you can have one in your spell book. It is a demon. Uh, it costs four to play, 70 life, and he's got a ton of abilities. So um, the little wing up there means it has flight. Beasties with this trait can only be the target of an attack of other beasties with flight, so pretty good. Um, the teeth, the creepy teeth one, I believe means it drains life. Let me let me look it up real quick. No, 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 it's different. Okay, the teeth one is fear. It says when a beastie with this trait is contracted, you may target a beastie and flip a coin. If heads, the chosen beastie flees the arena as placed into its owner's chapter. So when you play this, basically you pick one of your opponent's cards, uh, um, a beastie, and you flip a coin. If you win it, that goes back to their hand. Pretty good. It also gains plus 25 uh, if you're near a forest, an additional 25 it, if it is nighttime. So that's a plus 50 if it's if you're at a forest at night. So it says, when you contract Jersey Devil, you are dealt 50 damage unless you produce a blood curdling scream. I'm probably just gonna do a Sponge <laughs> SpongeBob scream and go, oh! That's probably what I'm gonna do when I play the Jersey Devil. Just imagine playing this card and just like, oh! Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's kind of like the, the fun of MetaZoo, man. That, that's the fun of MetaZoo. That's why I think this game is um, is so so cool. It also says reduce all damage Jersey Devil would take from attacks from other beasties to zero. A lot of cards on this list have that kind of effect. They're just really hard to deal with. But you can only have one of them in your spell book, so it th that's the kind of balancing act, right? You only have one of them in your deck, but it's powerful. Also has Fiery Stampede. It causes burn. So Jersey Devil would explode your Gumbaroos, or your opponent's Gumbaroos. Uh, so it, it does 50 damage and also inflicts burn. This card is sweet. Um, very, very sweet. Jersey Devil's legit, like really good card. Next up we have um, my favorite of all of the resource rocks. I guess I'm just gonna call them. So this is an artifact. This is Medium's Third Eye. You can have two per your spell book. Um, it costs zero to play and has 50 life. Artifacts in MetaZoo have life and your opponent can attack them and destroy them. So they're not like super all powerful, you know, hard to deal with. Your opponent can play a freaking Gumbaroo and kill, kill it. So it says, you may fatigue this page at any time to generate two like spirit ghost um, energy, aura. And so, um, also keep in mind that in MetaZoo, your artifacts come into play fatigued. So you can't play them the turn that they come into play unless you have a way to un unfatigue them, unexhaust them. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, this is just my favorite one. Every single type has one of these. Um, this one is just my favorite one. Once again, Poncho, absolutely fantastic artist. And I love the skull with the kind of like mystically space style background that it has going on. So... Yeah, medium third eye, really, really like it. Next up we have the, uh, this is a fan favorite. Um, ever since I started doing MetaZoo content, people have loved this. This is the Metal Man of Alabama. So this costs three to play, two electric and one of any 70 health. You can have two of them in your deck. It is a humanoid. It has two abilities, some really, really good abilities. So we already talked about that foot ability, which means it comes into play um, that does not enter fatigue. So you can attack immediately with it. And then the sword one means it has first strike which does the same thing that you would think of um, as like magic. So it says a beastie or spell with this trait always deals damage first, whether it's attacking or defending. If both of them have it, then you flip a coin to see which one deals the damage. And so what is the special abilities? All right, so it says, if there is a radio within eyesight, Metal Man of Alabama loses fleet and first strike. The radio just slows him down, man. And it says, if you are able to place a piece of tinfoil into the battleground without leaving your seat or spot you are standing, Metal Man of Alabama can be contracted for one less lightning aura. So you can just play it for two. So once again, bring a piece of bring a piece of tinfoil when you're playing with Metal Man. And that does 50 damage. 
really good. So 50 damage with basically haste and first strike is super good for two. Metal Man is super good. I also like saying Alabama. Metal Man of Alabama. All right, we're going to continue. Next up, we have Mothman. Um, touted as being one of the most popular and valuable cards in this entire game right now. Mothman's a weird card. It's also really sweet. So um, it costs five to play, which is a lot, actually. It has 100 life, only one per spellbook. It's just a beastie. It doesn't have a subtype, which is interesting. Um, it has flying. We already kind of talked about that. It also has the fear ability, which we already talked about. Um, if you're in a city, it does 50, uh, 25 damage. And if it's nighttime, it also does additional 25 damage. So it's winged attack. will do a total of 150 damage if you are at a city at night. It also says, when Mothman is contracted, you may have target caster, so any caster, you can choose yourself with this too, bookmark pages from the top of their deck until they have exactly seven pages in their chapter. So let me, let me I'll, I'll put this in the, the words that they actually mean. So you can um, draw cards from the top of their deck until they have exactly seven cards in their hand. And you prophesize, you know, name, any non-aura page, if the chosen caster has seven or more cards in their hand already, they do not discard or bookmark, or they don't uh, discard or draw any cards. Then reveal a card at random from the chosen player's hand, and if it's the card that you named, they lose the game. I don't know why you would choose this to yourself, just make yourself lose the game, um, but uh, it, it's super cool. If it is not the card you named, place Mothman and your entire chapter in the afterlife. So chapter's hand. So you <laughs> place Mothman and your entire hand into the discard pile, which is which is crazy. Really, really risky card. Really weird card in general. And um, once again, just, just really fun. Just really fun. And does a lot of damage. You, you can also just play him and deal 150 damage. Next up, we have the Piazza Bird, one of my personal... I mean, once again, these are all personal favorites, but I really like the Piazza Bird. I think it's really underrated. So you can only have one of them in your deck. It is a dragon, costs three to play, which is kind of low, actually, for its effect. Um, has 90 health, it has flying. If you're in a desert, it does an additional 50 damage. If there is a fire within eyesight... Don't light your cards on fire, everyone. Uh, Piazza Bird's attack gained an additional 50 damage, so... This card can do more damage than Mothman if there's a fire and you're in the desert. <laughs> it can do uh, 175 damage. It also says, while Piazza Bird is in the arena, all fire spells cost one less to play. That doesn't say for you. That's for everyone. But it's still super good. You're going to be playing this in a burn deck and all your burn spells are going to be cheaper and you're just going to go to town. It also does... Um, Magma Blast, which causes burn, does 75 damage and bonus damage to forest beasties. Piazza Bird is really good, and it's awesome looking. And once again, Poncho, man. Poncho. Really good. Next up, we have Quetzal... Quetzal... Quetzalcoatlus? Quetzalcoatlus? I'm just going to call it Quetzalcoatlus. Uh, Beastie Bird. You can have four in your deck, which is absurd. This is uh, also one of the best cards in the game. Costs four to play, has 90 life. A ton of abilities. We've already talked about them, though. Has flying... Uh, basically haste and first strike if you are in like a thunderstorm it does an additional 50 damage power cardinal winds reveal the top page of your spell book if the revealed is not an aura page and it's the same or its name starts with nor n w e or s i keep wanting to say northwest east or south it's the cardinal directions right um n w e or s deal 25 damage to target page or caster, shuffle the revealed page into your spellbook. So this is just kind of a, a way that you can deal like some bonus damage, you know, anywhere you want. It also has an in uh, interesting ability, uh, Static Beam. Static Beam does plus 10 damage for every light bulb directly above the battle battleground. It also causes, um, I believe that's like a, a paralyzed style effect, and it does 30 damage. This card is uh, a meta card. Really, really powerful. A lot of people play with, uh, with, with Quetzi. A lot of people play with, with Quetzi. Um, next up, we have Sam Sinclair, the Protag himself. You can only have one of them in your spellbook. He's a humanoid because he's he's the dude. Um, cost four to play, 90 health. He has that um, hasty ability. If it's sunny outside, he does an additional 25 damage. It says, while Sam Sinclair is in the arena, any page with Sam in its name may be contracted without paying its cost, which is sweet. So you want to play all the Sam cards with your Sam Sinclair, and they're pretty good. But we're not going to talk about him in today's video. 
he has a power investigate because he's a paranormal investigator. Reveal a face down trap card and then return it to its original position. Do not resolve its effects. You can just kind of like peep in, peep in on some traps or reveal a page um, of your choice in target caster's hand chapter uh, and then shuffle the chosen page into the spellbook. That's super sweet. So you just get to pick a card from their hand and it goes goes into the goes into the deck, which is sweet. And it also has a holy shot, does 40 damage, and then bonus damage against uh, dark cryptids and beasties. Sam's cool. It's kind of like a build around card. I think he's pretty powerful. I haven't really played with him at all, but I want to. He's cool. He's really cool. Um, next up and final card that we're gonna talk about today is uh, Tizheruk. I love this card. The art is super sweet. Once again, Poncho do. Uh, it's a four cost ice. Beastie, Beastie Dragon, has 90 health, one per spellbook, it has flying, if it's snowing, it does an additional 25 damage, and also if it's snowing, Tezheruk gains um, invisible, so we talked about that for um, uh, Bigfoot, which means that no defenders may be declared when a beastie or artifact with this trait attacks, and uh, it may not be the target of an attack. And all water beasties are considered ice beasties instead, as long as Tezheruk is in the arena. Then its attack is Tundra Blast, 60 damage and then bonus to Water Beasties. Target opposing page in combat is inflicted with, um, I think that is, let me, let me, let me look it up real quick. I think that's Paralyze or Freeze. We're going to look it up in real time. It is Freeze. It is Frozen um, for the 10 turns, which is absurd. Uh, it's a lot of turns. Target opponent pa opposing page, yeah. Uh, frozen 10. No, the Zeroq is really good and really cool. No pun. Yeah, dude, pun. Pun intended. So that is my top 14 list for MetaZoo Cryptid Nation. Let me know what your favorite cards are in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for joining me today. And we're going to be doing a lot of MetaZoo stuff in the coming weeks now that uh, Cryptid Nation First Edition is officially out. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And we'll see you next time for some more card game content. Have a good one, all. We'll see you later.